So one day, I was bored as heck, so I decided to watch some YouTube videos for funsies. I saw that Merch Review Springs, go subscribe to them if you aren't already, made a game on Roblox. Roblox. And you know what? I decided to play it because I was bored as heck. I've already played the game, but today I'm playing it again in order to review it because why the heck not? I need to learn how to review things, and I kinda just like this game. It's pretty good. This is my second draft of the script because the first one was kinda just a guide on how to beat the game, and I really did not like it, so that's why this video took a little longer than I wished that it did. Also, if you didn't think there would be spoilers for Poochink, there are, so go play it and come back. It's a good experience, it's pretty fun, I don't think you're gonna regret it. When you read the description of the game, it says that the game is a mascot horror game that takes mascot seriously, so don't expect anything really scary. I mean, the game is rated right plus. I'm gonna go over the gameplay, character designs, overall design, sound design, probably just music, and a little bit of story for each individual chapter, and then at the end I'll talk about all that stuff generally and give my rating of the game based on IGN's video game ranking system, because I can't come up with one myself and IGN's is pretty good and probably what I would've came up with. But with all that being said, go support the devs, those being MR Springs, Exotic Bra, Ultra Pug, the Perfectionist, SC Edgar, 65 Finals, Dish Dutch <sighs> I don't know whether I should be surprised or if I should have already known. That's, uh. Uh. I don't know. Vex and Fluttermush, and please enjoy. The game's lobby is fine. It displays the style of map building that we will come to know well, which isn't bad. The lighting in the game is also shown off, and to be honest, it's actually really good for a Roblox game, at least one that I've played. Of course, it isn't without its problems, as the walls are pretty empty, and it's sad because it already looks good, but with a design, maybe something like the walls in Banaf or Bendy, would have been even better. Originally, I wasn't that the big fan of the music, but it grew on me over time. Anyways, enough about the lobby, let's get into the actual game, starting with Chapter 1, which is titled The Return, which is kind of fitting because that's really what the chapter is about. The chapter begins with you looking at a sign that explains what to do. Find the entrance, get into the ticket booth, get the code for a gate, and find out what happened. I don't really know why the instructions are on a sign, but I guess it's just its job on instructing you. I mean, there could have been objective cards or something like that, because there's a couple of places in the game that would have been better with them, but I guess this just its job. One of the main gimmicks of the gameplay is messing around with movable objects and higher services in order to dodge mascots, which is honestly a pretty cool idea, but it isn't used as much as it should be, which leads to most of the gameplay being jumping above mascots, or that be on platforms that take you to places where you can't get killed, or running through long hallways with the mascots long behind you because they're so damn slow. Also, the flashlight is kind of pointless because the map is lit well enough to a point where using it is very unnecessary. The designs of the characters as shown in the posters and other things are really good, just that I think due to the limitations of Roblox's toolset, the models couldn't really resemble the concept, which I'm pretty sure MR Spring sub was 1970s mascot costumes, whenever I try to find a source, I can't find it. Please help me, I want to find a source, and maybe I'll re-edit the entire damn video to put it in if I find it. Some characters though kinda suck, like Burnt Pooch, who's just Pooch but Dark Spring Trapified. And I'm not really that big a fan of Dark Spring Trap, because recolor without Blood pants. Pooch. Jesus, it's stupid. Also, I know this came out long before Ban Ban, but for me it's like OP the bird. My brain is so fucking broken that it's all I can see. Never let me see flamingos or else I will actually start screaming, He's got that Ohio Jumbo Josh race, bro! I get sent to a silly house. The characters are animated just okay. The only fantastic animation in the chapter is from the first Pooch mascot that's alive, who stands idle and that's all he does. He looks like he's trying to hold himself up, as if he's not supposed to be standing, but he is anyway. Motivational. He looks so close to being alive, but he isn't quite there yet. It's honestly pretty creepy, and I wish the character's running animations were more like this instead of Roxy's running animation from the first Security Breach gameplay trailer, which I hate with a burning passion because it just looked like ass. Moving on to the overall designs, the car at the beginning looks pretty good, and the license plate has SPR1 NG written on it, which is a funny little reference to MR Springs, the head developer of the game. I don't really understand why there's a clock on top of it, though. It isn't really important to the story, and I don't even think there's one at the end of the game that shows us how long we were at the park, which kind of beats the purpose of putting a clock there in the first place. The exterior of the park looks really good, but there's very little forestation on it because it just stops at some point, which just looks kind of weird. The artwork in the chapter is pretty good, but it doesn't feel real. Like, the art can actually exist in real-life amusement parks, but the way it's drawn is too cartoony. The fact that most of it is slightly transparent and you can see the texture of the block through it is actually pretty cool, because it looks better than it would have if it was fully visible, because it looks either painted on or rotted or however you want to think about it. Also, there should have been some 
on the exterior, and if you don't agree with me, you're a dummy McDump. The areas inside the park are really nice, but some of them are too bright for me. I feel like the better areas in the park are the ones that are more lit by actual light sources instead of Roblox's basic lighting, which is kind of just there. And I don't like it, because it... I don't like it. I can't really explain it, but, uh, penis. The music in this chapter isn't anywhere as near as good as it is in the rest of the game, but it's okay. It's also either really loud or really quiet. The sound effects are kind of mediocre, which is sad because of how good the soundtrack is compared to them. The chapter gives us a very generic plot for the story, which is that we play as an employee of an old amusement park that got laid off 20 years ago, and decide to come back in 2005 to find out why they were laid off and why the place shut down. The place is abandoned, because of course it is. The employee, or us, just walk in like we own the place. The only real story elements revealed are that Mr. Martin is super fucking based. I mean, he actually questions why the security system is so fucking weird. That, according to a secret room, there's a strange robot called Prototype Red that escaped its containment a very long time ago. Don't ask me to solve that equation. I'm barely passing math right now. That's a joke. Is it? I gotta check my grades. I'll be right back. We also get our first glimpse at Red Materium in this chapter, seeing it inside of barrels all over the place and burning his Red Materium fire. We never really get to find out much about it, but at least I think it's not made of dead children, which is a breath of fresh air for mascot horror. Red Materium will end up being really important to the story, but I'm not going to explain to you the full Poochank lore right now, because I just want to review the game. The chapter also introduces the idea that something important is in the water park, which will be explained way later on. I'm talking like, the end of chapter 4. Honestly, this chapter is okay. That's what it needs to do, that being a simple beginning that teaches you the gameplay style, the areas within the chapter are pretty good looking and for the most part pretty fun to traverse. I give this chapter a 67 out of 100. Anyways, with that being said, let's move on to chapter 2, the quest. Chapter 2 has a lot better gameplay than Chapter 1, as you get to do a lot more parkour, which is pretty fun. Sadly, there's not much mascot action in this chapter, as for the first half of the chapter, there's only like, two mascots chasing you. I like the Knight's Challenge, because despite how small it is, the pin of mascots below you and the tiny platforms you need to jump onto provide a sense of danger, as you know that you're 100% going to die if you fall down there, with no escape possible. The food court is stupidly hard to get through, and for that I wish that Benny is cast into Darkest Pits of Hell with William J. Afton. Also, the flashlight is completely gone in this chapter, which in my opinion is a massive W. In my opinion, the best area in the chapter is definitely the Royal Arena, where you get chased by Prototype Red. This area really shows off how good the map can look at times, and my god, the music is fucking peak! Oh, and another thing, Prototype Red never stops running at full speed. I love this chase sequence so much, as it manages to show off the best of every element that the game has, from music, to character design, to the map design, to lighting. This is the peak of the chapter, maybe even the whole entire game. I love the chase sequences in this game, they're so fucking good. The designs of the brand new characters in this chapter are pretty good. Construction and Pooch is adorable, Benny looks pretty good, and Mercy is kinda... Uh, well... The gallery says that she's devious, and man, I would let her give me a devious li- I'M NOT A FURRY, I SWEAR! Prototype Red looks phenomenal. His face looks like it was cut open by himself, and not by an employee. The design of his body is really cool looking, and the red materium gas leaking out of him makes him look all the more awesome. He's also pretty creepy, which is cool, because this game is supposed to be a horror game. The only problem that I have with him is that his lower arms aren't connected to his upper arms and they're just floating. While there is a canon explanation for this given on the VHS tapes on the Poochink YouTube channel, I don't think that magnets are going to do that, no matter how strong they are. The areas in this chapter are pretty amazing, and there isn't a single one that I think looks bad, except the haunted house, because it's so empty, and there aren't even any real threats in there except accidentally walking into a construction pooch. My favorite area design-wise, aside from the royal arena, probably the rest of the dungeon. I can't really explain why I like it, aside from the entrance with the skulls inside the walls made a magnum looking looking peak. The soundtrack for this chapter is actual fire. Like, S.E. Edgar was cooking. We're making it out of the pooch park with this one. I gotta say, Prototype Red's theme is probably like my second favorite song in the entire soundtrack, only be by- well, I'll tell you later. There's quite a few new story elements introduced in this chapter. For example, there's this backrooms looking area that based on the description of the badge you get for finding it, is a distorted vision of the past, which ends up coming back later on. We also learn, from a little lab, that the mascots were great at everything they had to be great at, except for following orders. I mean, what did the employees expect to happen when they put an artificial intelligence in charge of giving the commands? Oops, that's a spoiler. 
but uh, let's just ignore that for now, we'll get back to that later. We learn Prototype Red's true name, Mr. Red, which is his in-park name, which is why it's so much less scary. He's also called the Red Materia Monster in the gallery, in the name of his chase music, which is a name definitely not inspired by a different main antagonist from a different mascot horror game. We also learn that Mr. Red is the most advanced animatronic in the world, according to Poochink, which isn't really a surprise considering that he's, according to the VHS tapes on a darn dang developed YouTube channel, in control of the majority of the systems at the park which is something I could never expect an AI from the 80s to do, but I'll excuse it because I'm not really expecting this game to have a really good story because it's a mascot horror game, and also because I love Mr. Red despite how unrealistic the concept of his name is. Honestly, Chapter 2 was a pretty big step up from Chapter 1. This chapter took every good element from the first chapter and expanded on it in interesting ways. I give this chapter a 75 out of 100. Anyways, moving on to Chapter 3, The Experiment, which I don't really know how it got its name like that. Like, what is the experiment in the chapter? Like, there is no experiment at all. First of all, to my dismay, the flashlight has returned to make my gaming experience less good. However, this time, there are areas where using the flashlight is actually a good idea. So, uncommon flashlight W, I guess. I like the way that the map is laid out, as it feels more compact and connected than the other chapters, which is really nice because in my opinion, smaller areas can lead to a more horror experience that most of the game lacks. Being able to see the second half in the map at the beginning is just cool. The parkour in the jungle gym is kinda weird because of the fact that you jump on bananas, but other than that, it's pretty good. I also really like the area with Mr. Red and the experiment, which ends with a chase sequence from Monster Pooch, was everything in him that I like about Mr. Red. One thing I don't like about the gameplay, however, is the fact that the frog likes you. What this means is that Ricky, a frog mascot, won't kill you, but she still chases you. It feels kinda weird because nothing really changes from this. Yeah, she won't kill you, but she'll still chase you and get up in your face, which kinda defeats the point of a friendly character, leads to an experience more annoying than just being killed, which I think was the point, but it's not good. The Monster Pooch chase sequence takes everything I loved about the Mr. Red chase sequence, good map, good soundtrack, good lighting, and a good design for the chaser. The ending is also pretty cool, as the entrance to the water park manages to look kinda spooky because of the scratches on the ground, the dummies, the ambience, the notes from Mr. Red on the walls, the you Pooch mascot, there. and the text of Red Materium on the ground. It makes me excited for the next chapter, but however, we will have to wait to get into chapter 4, as we still have to finish discussing this chapter. The designs of the characters in this chapter are really good. All of the new characters are awesome looking, and I really like Jangly and Winnie both having broken arms because it just looks cool. Ricky isn't really got anything to write home about, but she does have those goofy off and F movie eyes, and I know this came out before the FNAF movie posters, but it's just kind of funny. She also just looks kind of stoned. The experiments look really cool, and their torn up appearances spark some questions, but once again, by far the peak of the designs of this chapter is a Mr. Red variant, this time Monster Pooch. Monster Pooch is a Pooch mascot fused with a Mr. Red prototype, and his face kinda looks like Molten Freddy. He's peak, and I can't really explain why. I think that by far, this chapter has the best map, and not just gameplay-wise like I stated earlier, but also design-wise. The textures and props fit very well for each area, and the lighting is just the cherry on top. I love the fact that every wall is filled with posters and other decorations that fit the area. The music for this chapter is pretty good, Monster Pooch's chase theme is peak, because of course it is, but one complaint I have is that the sound that kinda sounds like a whistling in the jungle adventure theme is really bad compared to the rest of the components of the song. Like, you're just jamming and it's like, or whatever the heck it's like, and I just can't, it, it sucks. The sound effects in this chapter are the same ones from the previous chapters, but the sound used to open vents is used in sister location. I know it's a stag sound, but like Ricky having the Freddy Flesh Bear eyes, it's just kinda funny. In chapter 3, the only new story stuff we get to learn about is the experiments in Monster Pooch. Supposedly Mr. Red just kinda... tore them apart for some reason? I don't know why. Go watch Just Sam's video on it or something. He did a pretty good job making a theory about it. Originally, I was conflicted on whether I enjoyed this chapter or chapter 2 more, because everything chapter 3 does well, chapter 2 does just as well, but I'm gonna have to say that I like chapter 3 more. This chapter gets an 83 out of 100, and here's to hoping that chapter 4, The Doom, makes for a good conclusion to this game. Gameplay-wise, Chapter 4 is very similar to Chapter 3. For the most part, this chapter also takes a more linear approach with the map layout, which I enjoy. The gameplay in Chapter 4 is also very simple, which I won't complain about because I kinda enjoy it, I think it makes for a scarier experience with simpler gameplay. In my opinion, the best part of the chapter is definitely the inside of the Red Materium production facility. The little puzzle, parkour, and chase sequence at the end are all really good. Despite being good, I don't think that the chase sequence was that good of an idea. I mean, they gotta try to do something better, like maybe a cool puzzle where you have to avoid the Red Materium monster while you do it and then you kill him. Yeah, um, this is where you kill him. He dies, um, and it's just a chase sequence. It's kind of underwhelming. 
The new characters all have really cool designs, except for Dandy. Fuck Dandy. In this chapter, the Red Materium monster got, like, a mega boost of Red Materium or something, because the eyes and mouth are growing red now, and it looks really good and kinda makes me wonder why it wasn't always this way. Once again, I'm gonna have to say the best ones are the monsters. Yeah, it's not just Monster Boost this time, there's two more now. Monster Loogie, and they'll peel a bird from Spider Spears- I MEAN MONSTER FLAMY! The best of them is Monster Loogie, and I don't think you'd disagree with me if you played this game like I asked you to. The water park looks pretty good, the old park looks pretty good, the red material production facility looks pretty good, I don't know, I can't really find anything interesting to say about the map because everything looks amazing. The songs are great and the sound effects are great. They really help make the game feel more alive because if they didn't exist then the chapter might have been pretty boring. The best one is definitely repurposed ruins, as it feels like proper music for a stealth section, but it's also kind of creepy. I also feel like the music in the chapter completion area nails more of a horror vibe than a track that plays on the lobby, but both are good, so I'm not complaining. Chapter 4 actually gets a few new story revelations. You know how earlier I said that the backrooms looking place would come back? Yeah, this is where it is. Mr. Herring's research and design office has a lot of Mr. Red prototypes and red materium in it. Next to the exit, there's a room with a pooch mascot made of cut- I mean, silver icing! I have no idea why it's there, and I really do not know why it exists. It's kind of funny. And also, you can knock him over. It's a little bit funny. Oh, and also, the park we go through in the game was built around an old version of the park, which is where the red materium production facility is. In there, we get to learn that red materium is some weird liquid and or gas that can create remote connections between objects, and that Mr. Red was put in charge of controlling the red materium and fused stuff. We also learned that the price of producing red materium was the reason that the park shut down, as it cost so much that the park went bankrupt. Well, I mean, when you make a gas that can, like, make remote connections between, like, just objects, of course it's gonna cost a bajillion dollars. We don't really get an explanation as to what red materium is. But, of course, Just Sam made a video on what Red Materium actually is, so go watch it or Splooch will come to your house. And of course, the most important detail in this entire game, the main protagonist is... Poor as fuck. I mean, more dirt poor than dirt. They can't even afford dirt. Their house is tiny as fuck. They only have one room for everything. And the toilet is completely exposed to the outside wall because of the window. There's not even blinds. They don't even have a fucking bed. Just two couches. The only things of interest in that house are stuff from the goddamn park. This person is broke. Broker than me. Okay, but to be honest, the ending is just kinda underwhelming. Toss the red material monster into a furnace and go home. Isn't that kinda just the ending to Benny and the Ink Machine? I'll let you think about that one. Anyways, this chapter was a pretty good conclusion. I've seen better endings to mascot horror games, but this isn't bad at all. Just nothing spectacular. I give this chapter an 80 out of 100. Anyways, let's move on to the general stuffs. The gameplay is either fun or chase sequences. You're either doing some fun parkour, dodging mascots, or getting caught up in a chase sequence. The chase sequences are good, but I feel like the game would have benefited from less of them and more stealth. The lack of speed in the mascots running kinda takes away quite a bit of the spook factor, especially in Chapter 1 where there's a long maze chase sequence where the only real danger is getting caught by a mascot because you didn't see him behind a curtain. In my opinion, the mascot should always be at the speed they are when they first spot you and rush towards you. Also, for some reason, there's an option to stop running, which is stupid because, well, why would you want to do that? Sure, the mascots are really slow, but they can actually outrun you if you walk. Usually, this wouldn't be a bad thing, but when you can outrun them while you're running, something is very wrong. Keeping the mascots at full speed and removing the walk tug or giving it a purpose would be an easy fix to this. I also feel like the mascot shouldn't have been like mass produced as it makes them all feel a little less special. My own personal fix for the issue of just having a bunch of random pooch clones in one area would be instead giving all of the big characters special mechanics that keep you on your toes which would effectively get rid of the need to just add a bajillion pooches in one spot. Also, I still don't like the flashlight even if there's some areas where using it can look good. Also, the buttons look really bad. And I made multiple jokes about this in the original draft of the script. The fix here is really easy, just make the buttons smaller and maybe add some metal behind them so that they at least look like the buttons from Garden of Ban Ban. The art style of this game is pretty good. The character models don't really feel like they would be in a real amusement park, but blame it on Roblox for not allowing easy ways to make hyper-realistic models, I guess. The way that they're animated is fine, but it could have been better. I mean, most of the jump scares are getting bitch slapped, even Mr. Red's, which honestly is a very missed opportunity and I'm like, drill a hole through your head or something. The posters and such are cool beans, they look pretty good, but like the models, I won't expect to see them at an amusement park. The maps are cool looking, and for the most part they flow pretty well in the gameplay, but I would have liked it if there was special wall designs like the walls in the Click Team era FNAF games. 
The soundtrack is fire, and I don't care if I'm backed into a corner by people with better taste in music than me, I will die on this hill. The best track in the soundtrack is 100% the unused track for the water park. Shame it's unused, though. Damn you, Roblox copyright detection system. The sound effects used fit pretty well, all except for the jump scare, which should have been a scream or something, but no, just some goofy ah alert sound. Okay, this is a little unscripted part, I don't know when I'm gonna put this in, but I don't think the game is supposed to be taken completely seriously. I mean, like, I've read, like, a couple descriptions of the game, like, the main description of the game says it doesn't really... It's meant to take mascot seriously, there's, like, uh, the fucking, uh... The, uh... There's another description of the game I just saw on Google where it says it's a parody of mascot horror and also there's a few funny jokes in the game that are like things that I think like are supposed to make fun of mascot horror like Mr. Martin being extremely fucking based. Um, yeah, I don't know when I'm putting this in but uh, it'll be in there at some point. Okay, we're done here, so let's end this video. Final. I fucking love this game. It's nowhere near the best game I've played, but I find myself coming back to this every now and again simply because I find it fun and it has some sort of charm to it. I'm mining all of my scores and dividing the total by 4 to get my overall score out of 100, Poochink got a 76.25 out of 100. The game is good, but certain elements can hold it down at times, which is pretty sad, but even while held down, the game is still pretty good and I'm excited to see what darn dang develop is cooking up next with their upcoming encrypted catchers, which you bet your ass I'm going to play and review. It also looks a lot more scary, so does that. And now we've reached the end. Join me next time as I, probably, talk about something related to FNAF, because that's the main point of my channel, and I kinda gotta establish that because this is only my second video. Okay, with all that being said, go support the devs, those being MR Springs, Exotic Bra, Ultra Pug, The Perfectionist, SC Edgar, 65 Finals, Dish I don't know how to pronounce this still, Vex, and Fluttermush, and I will see you all on the flip side.